Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation D Films. My name is Alan. Today I want to look at the Razor Crest, the main ship used by the Mandalorian. It serves not only as his home, but also a tax-deductible home office where he stores the tools of his trade and also the bounties he collects. A quick glance at the ship from the outside and one can tell that the Razor Crest is designed for functionality rather than beauty. The oversized blockade runner style engines are reminiscent of the Clone Wars era consular cruisers. Speed was apparently on the minds of the designers of the ship when they drew up the blueprint. But so was cargo space. This wasn't a starfighter, but a ship designed to carry a load. A quick look at the cockpit and it becomes pretty obvious that this also wasn't a freighter, which would have had a more comfortable and spacious area for the pilot and co-pilot, an important feature for those long range hauls. Instead, what we see is a cockpit that was snug and designed to be used by just a single pilot. Not quite as snug as an interceptor cockpit, but something you might see on a bomber or an assault craft. With all of these characteristics put together, we can probably assume that the Razor Crest was some type of gunship transport hybrid. The ample storage space and dropship style landing ramp might be found on some freighters, but the oversized engines for sublight speed are a luxury that most merchants would skip on. A fast hyperdrive can get them from point A to point B pretty quickly, and real space maneuvering and performance only became a problem when they encountered pirates or aggressive corporate defense forces. The Razor Crest is a slightly more violent ship than your average hauler, and it's kind of perfect for a violent man in a violent profession. Also, since the Mandalorians are a pretty nomadic people by this point in time, the Razor Crest would also need to serve as a living space, which it does pretty well. Mandos aren't exactly concerned with luxury or comfort, they were more worried about whether the walls were thick enough to stop an anti-tank round. And there also happens to be a lot of extra room in his living space for bounties. This is pretty much the perfect ship for the job. Now, the more I look at the Razor Crest, the more I begin to wonder what exactly its backstory is. Because of the way Mandalorians operate, there's always a story behind every major acquisition they make. And there's also usually some poor schmuck holding a gut wound by the end of that story. Jango Fett's fire spray had a pretty cool backstory. It was a prototype and Fett stole it during a prison break that he engineered. Cad Bane also had a cool ship, the Rogue Class Starfighter, which he won after he stole four sensitive babies for Emperor Palpatine. So what is the Razor Crest story? Well, from what we can tell, it was designed before the Empire had even started, so it's at least 30 years old. It was also originally used as a military craft to patrol local territories. Beyond that, we don't have much detail. But given the time frame, we do know that this ship was probably operational during the Clone Wars. It doesn't mean that the clones used this ship, it could have also been used uh, by local planetary defense forces, say in the Outer Rim. But my first reaction upon seeing this ship was how eerily similar it was to a clone low altitude assault transport. Especially the fuselage, which is shaped in the same way. Both crafts feature the same tail end ramp and cockpit placement as well. The LAAT's wings, of course, are downswept, and while the engines are in the right location, they are far smaller than on the Razor Crest. Also, there's a double cockpit, not a single cockpit on the LAAT, along with two ball turret gunners, and the front of the fuselage kind of widens out at the bottom thanks to the two chin-mounted laser turrets. There are also several other small differences between the two ships, but the resemblance here is very clear. These two ships could have easily belonged to the same family and perhaps were even the same model, but just different model years. The Razor Crest definitely looks more similar to the LAAT than, say, a Fox body Mustang compared to the first generation of Mustangs. It also is quite clear that both the Razor Crest and the LAAT ships have a similar purpose adequate flight characteristics and speed, and the ability to survive intense incoming fire so you can keep your cargo safe. So let's take a look now at the LAAT's history. There's a lot more information about this ship, and maybe we can find something that will connect it to the Razor Crest. The LAAT was originally designed by Rathana Heavy Engineering, a subsidiary of Quat Drive Yards that focused on secret projects. Rothana Heavy Engineering was located on Rothana, a pretty remote planet that was far away from prying eyes. Darth Flagus and Darth Sidious have been secretly building a clone army on Kamino, an army that needed tanks, carriers, star destroyers, and transports. Rothana Engineering not only built the LAATs, 
They also manufactured the all-terrain tactical enforcers, which could be lifted into combat by a special type of LAAT. They also designed the larger Acclimator-class assault ship and a variety of other vehicles. Now, this project was supposed to be carried out in complete secrecy, but we know that Quad Drive Yards was run by very smart business people who were very shrewd. Quad Drive Yards was old money. It had pretty much been around since the earliest days of the Old Republic. While a lot of worlds like Fondor and Corellia had orbital shipyards, the planet of Quant had an orbital shipyard so large that it formed a complete ring around the planet. The shipyard was originally started by 10 aristocratic families known as the 10, led by the Kuat family. They helped turn KDY into one of the planet's most profitable enterprises and eventually became one of the galaxy's most powerful companies. KDY had a reputation for being an extremely aggressive company that used its massive amount of power to undercut smaller businesses and then just outright absorb their operations, designs, engineers, and clients. This is actually how KYD first got their hands on Rothana Heavy Engineering. As a founding member of the corporate sector authority, Quad Drive Yards was also a powerful force in deregulating restrictions on mega conglomerates and also limiting antitrust laws. The Galactic Republic's relatively weak and corrupt central governments made it extremely easy for Quad Drive Yards to do essentially whatever it wanted. So now let's go back to the LAAT design. It was most likely commissioned somewhere around 31 BBY as a part of the wider Project Ice Fang. This was the name of the overall KDY project to arm the entire clone army. Although these ships were completely designed and built before the Clone Wars even started, KDY was contractually obligated not to release any information about these ships to the wider public. But that doesn't mean they couldn't use, say, the fuselage or maybe the cockpit design and recycle it for another one of their ships. This was actually pretty common practice for all of the major shipyards in the galaxy. This is why you can usually tell a Carillion Engineering Corporation freighter from other brands. All CEC ships share some similar designs and components. The same thing could be said for Senior Fleet Systems TIE Fighter line, which featured similar cockpit designs, or Incom Starfighter line from Headhunter to ARC-170 to X-Wing. So the Razor Crest is most definitely not the same exact model as the clone dropships are, but it could be a model within the same family as the LAAT, or maybe it's using its uh, rebranded or relicensed design. Kind of like how the Ford Fusion was rebadged as the Lincoln MKZ and Mercury Milan. The LAAT, as we mentioned before, had some different variants, which was not just limited to the transport carrier and infantry transport. There was also the space gunship variant, which was completely sealed off and pressurized, and the smaller civilian version known as the LAAT LE gunship. This was used mainly by police forces as a patrol and transport vehicle. It had much less armor and less weaponry as well. The ship's profile was much smaller, making it suitable for the cramped alleys of megacities like Coruscant. If the LAAT LE gunships with its radically different design fits into the same family as the LAAT, then there's no reason why the Razor Crest couldn't be considered as well. The Razor Crest could be a more built up space version of the LAAT. The basic gunships were mainly focused on ferrying troops from the larger assault transports directly to the surface of a planet. This could be why the LAAT had much smaller sublight thrusters. In-atmosphere vessels generally relied on repulsor lifts, which only worked within a planet's gravity well. The oversized engines on the Razor Crest signifies that this ship is designed for deep space operations and travel. This becomes much more apparent during the dogfight in Episode 5, where the Mandalorian is being chased by a pretty sleek-looking starfighter. It actually looks a bit like the headhunters of the Clone Wars period, but the engines are a little bit too far from the fuselage. Anyway, whatever this other bounty hunter is flying, it definitely is a starfighter designed for dogfighting. As we'll see in the Clone Wars, normal LAATs that are not escorted generally don't do well against enemy fighters. They lack the maneuverability and speed to avoid getting shot down. The Razor Crest, however, is able to move pretty nimbly for a ship of its size and even manages to pull off a pretty intense maneuver, forcing the enemy to overshoot. While the Razor Crest is definitely not as maneuverable as the other ship the other bounty hunter is flying, it definitely is nimble enough to get out of this situation. 
it would make sense for quad drive yards to rebadge the LAT and design it for more space operations and market it as a multi-purpose gunship carrier fighter similar to what the U-Wing was for the Rebellion. The smaller gunship class was perfect for smaller planetary defense forces or corporations that just didn't have the budget for larger capital ships or cruisers or destroyers. And honestly, if you're located in the outer rim, these larger ships would not only be hard to refuel and resupply, they would also kind of be overkill. At the end of the day, getting more use out of the LAAT platform is just good business practice. Research and development takes an extremely long time, especially for a Starship, which I imagine would have a huge list of safety and performance regulations. I mean, just look at what Boeing has been able to do with the 737 model. It first took flight in 1967, and at the time was only 94 feet in length, could carry 100 people, and had a max range of 1,540 nautical miles. The most recent 737 MAX 10 is 143 feet long, could carry 204 people, and had a range of 3,300 nautical miles. Boeing probably should have designed a completely new aircraft from the ground up because the 737's frame was too low to the ground to accommodate engines large enough to power this larger version of itself. They ended up using a smaller engine that was a bit underpowered, and it actually changed the flight characteristics of the plane so much that they had to create a computer system that forced the plane to handle like the original 737. So the pilots didn't have to go through a completely different certification program. From a shareholder's point of view, Boeing had saved a ridiculous amount of money by relying on the same base design for more than 50 years. It's kind of human nature to conduct business in this way. That's why humans are so successful in the wider Star Wars galaxy. And a company like Quad Drive Yards, which was not the most ethical company in the world, should be expected to act in a very similar way, which is probably why it's wise that the Mandalorian doesn't allow droids to help control a ship. Because clearly the computer system installed in the 737 MAX aircraft had a taste for human blood. So there you have it guys, those are some of my theories about what the Razor Crest is. Let me know if you guys have any other theories of your own. There are a few other ships that the Razor Crest kind of looks like. There's, um, I think the Wookiee gunship is a bit similar to in design, it has the two large engines and the drop, uh, drop ship fuselage. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.